Okay, welcome back. So we just talked about image compression using the fast Fourier transform. Now we're actually going to code it up on a real example. We're going to load an image, FFT it, um, and, and go through the whole steps of doing image compression. So this should be pretty fun. Okay, um, Let's get started. So the first thing, of course, we're going to clear all, close all, CLC. And now we're going to um, load a full image. Okay, So I like to comment my code so that I know what I'm doing later. I'm going to say uh, load full image. And I'm even going to print to the screen that I'm loading full image. Okay, so this might uh, take some time, so I want there to be little notes on my screen telling me what's happening as, as the MATLAB's doing it. Okay, so I'm going to say A equals image read. This is a built in MATLAB command image read, and it's going to store the image to my matrix A. And I'm going to image read a file called afghan3 and that afghan3 is a jpeg okay so if you go down here to my working directory i have a bunch of images in my working directory one of them is called afghan3.jpg that's the one we're loading okay so i'm loading this is just a great matlab command that loads afghan3.jpg into a matrix a and i'm going to build a figure Say figure uh, three, and I'm going to image show. This is a, you know I have im read and image show, and I'm going to im show a. Okay, let's run this. Ah, I probably shouldn't have let a print to the screen, so I'm going to comment that out. Okay, you don't want to print a huge matrix to your screen, so I'm going to suppress the output with a semicolon. And run this. And this is the image that we're going to work with. Okay, so this is the famous uh, National Geographic uh, image. We're going to use this as a demonstration for image compression. So this is very high resolution color image. Okay, high resolution is nice for now. And let's just look at what the size of, um, if I look at size of A, we'll find that this image is, first of all, large. Um, so it's, let's type that one more time. So if I look at the size of A, <clears throat> it's a 1403 by 1405 pixel image. So it has 1403 by 1405. And notice that there's also a third dimension, 3, because it's got three channels, red, green, and blue. Okay, so this is a big multi-dimensional array. It's not just a, a matrix. It's actually three matrices, one for red, green, and blue. Okay. Um, so this is great. We have a really high resolution image to work with. It's in color. Now, to actually do processing, I, you can do everything I'm going to show you in color, but I just want to kind of demonstrate the ideas here. So I'm going to make this a black and white image. I'm going to say A, uh, so make black and white image, or really grayscale. So A, black and white, is going to be RGB to gray. Of A. This is a built in MATLAB command that takes a three channel video, uh, image signal and turns it into a grayscale signal. Okay. And um, I also want to know what is the size, uh, the number of X pixels and the number of Y pixels. So the size of A black and white 2. Okay, so now I have these variables that tell me what the size of my image is. And I'm going to make another figure, figure 1, uh, and I'm going to subplot. 2 by 2 by 1, so this is going to have four panels, and in the first panel I'm going to show the full image. M show A black and white 2. Uh, and I'm going to title this subplot, I'm going to say this is my original image. And I'm going to use a font size of let's say 16 so you can actually see it. Okay, so my original image is here in this first panel, and then what we're going to do is we're going to compress this image with different aggressiveness of compression, and we're going to show how good they compare in these panels over here. Okay, so this is kind of setting up the groundwork for this compression problem. Okay, good. So now we've done a number of neat things. We've done the um, you know, we've loaded an image, we've made it black and white. Now what we're going to do is we're going to fast Fourier transform it and we're going to look at the Fourier coefficients. Okay? Now when you do the fast Fourier transform, I told you that you have fast Fourier transform on single vectors, right? 
but this is an image. This is a matrix now, a red, green, blue, sorry, a grayscale matrix. So how do I do fast Fourier transform on a matrix? Well, I do fast Fourier transform on all the columns. And then I could do fast Fourier transform on that new row vector, or I could do fast Fourier transform on all the rows, and then do a fast Fourier transform on that column. I could do things like that. And in MATLAB, there's a built-in command called FFT2, and it allows you to take the FFT of two-dimensional uh, arrays, or matrices, if you will. Okay, so that's what we're going to do now. We're going to say, now we're going to compute the FFT of our image using FFT2. Okay, so um, we're going to print to the screen uh, doing FFT analysis for sparsity check. And I'll tell you what sparsity means in a minute. Sparsity just means that the matrix of Fourier coefficients is mostly going to be nearly zero. Okay, sparse means a lot of zeros. Okay, and then we're going to say AT, this is my A Fourier transform. This is A hat, if you like. Uh, maybe I should call it A hat. Yeah, let's call this a hat equals FFT2 of my black and white image. Okay, so so far this is actually pretty straightforward. We have, um, we load an image, we make it grayscale, and then we're going to take this two-dimensional fast Fourier transform, and we're going to get a matrix of frequencies, of Fourier coefficients. Okay, and the last thing I want to do is I actually want to um, plot this for you. So I'm going to create, um, I'm going to create a matrix F of um, the log of the absolute value of FFT shift, this is a lot of stuff, of A hat, plus 1. F equals a mat to gray. I'll tell you what this is all doing in a minute. And then I'm going to make a fourth figure, and I'm going to do M show of F. So display the results. And let's just make sure that this actually runs before I uh, talk too much about what I'm doing. Good. So this ran. And I'm just going to make this small. This is my image of Fourier coefficients. Okay. So what we're doing here is um, we've done this fast Fourier transform. We get this A hat. It's our matrix of frequencies. Now, I told you that most of these frequencies are small. And one of the ways that you can see the difference between small and big values really easily is by taking the log of those values. Okay, so I'm taking the a hat values, FFT shift, basically um, is just a built-in MATLAB command that allows me to take my fast Fourier transform matrix and retranslate it back into a coordinate system that makes sense uh, to us. Okay, so. In the computer, it does the fast Fourier transform one way, and it gives out input its answer in a certain format. And FFT shift brings it back into a format that's good for plotting. Okay, so here we'll see that the origin really corresponds to zero frequency. Okay, this is like zero frequency component. That's just a, a constant gray at all locations. And then you have you know high frequencies in X, high frequencies in Y, and these are high frequencies in both X and Y. Okay, so FFT shift just brings this back to a human readable format. Let's say that I didn't take the log. Let's say I just do this with, uh, without the log. Without the log, you'll see that almost all of the pixels are just black. Okay, so this really means that most values are zero. And we're actually doing the log so that we can see any difference in the values at all. Okay. So most of these pixels are pretty dark, and we can threshold them and throw them away. This is the upshot, is that when I look at the FFT, I find that most of the values are quite small and can be thrown away. And that's exactly what we're going to do. We're going to find the small values, we're going to threshold them, throw them away, and we're only going to store the Fourier coefficients that are large enough that, are, that we don't think are just noise. Okay, great. So we're... Okay, we're doing good here. So now we're going to zero out small Fourier coefficients. So this a hat, we're going to find small values, and we're just going to set them equal to zero. And then we're going to inverse Fourier transform to get a new image. Okay, so the last thing we're going to do is zero out small coefficients and inverse transform. Okay, so um, I'm going to create something called count pick equals two. 
Remember that image where we had the grayscale image in the upper left corner and there were three other places for images? This count pick is just keeping track of which subplot we're on. Okay, so for threshold equals, and I, I just cooked these numbers up, um, you know, kind of offline, but you can try different numbers. So for threshold equals 0.1 times uh, 0.001, 0.005 and 0.01 times the max of absolute value of my a hat. Okay, so basically what I'm doing is I'm saying take all of my values in a hat and find the biggest possible Fourier coefficient. And then anything that's below 0.001 times that maximum value, anything below 0.1% of that max value, just throw it away. And I'm trying these three different threshold values. So this first one is the least aggressive, second least aggressive, and then this is the most aggressive. So here I'm throwing away the most coefficients, um, or maybe it's vice versa. You'll see when we plot it, okay? Um, yeah, a lower threshold is probably um, throwing away more, we'll see. And we're going to say the indices are equal to the values where my Fourier coefficients are larger than threshold. So this indice object is going to be a big matrix, the same size as my image, and it's going to be full of zeros and ones. So it's going to have ones in locations where my Fourier coefficient was larger than threshold. So those I'm going to keep and it's going to have zeros everywhere else. So for all of my Fourier coefficients that are larger than threshold, we keep them. For all of my Fourier coefficients that are smaller than threshold, this indice matrix is going to have zeros, and we're going to multiply those by zero. Okay, then we're going to say a hat low, this is a low pass kind of object, is equal to a hat dot times indice. Okay, so remember, if my indice was 1, those are indices that I want to keep because they had a lot of energy. And if my indice was 0, those are indices I want to throw away because they had very little power. Sorry, not energy, power. Okay, we're almost ready. Now what we're going to do is we're going to, we're, we want to keep track of how much we're keeping and how much we're throwing away. So I'm going to say percent equals 100 minus count. Um, well, I have to keep track of what count is. So count equals nx times ny, the number of total pixels in my image, minus the sum of my indices. Okay, so indice of colon takes this array and it reshapes it into a huge vector. And I'm just adding up all of my indices. So remember, most of my indices were zero. But all of the indices I keep are to have ones, so this adds up to the total number of non-zero Fourier coefficients. And I want to know how many of those are there, basically. How many am I keeping? So percentage is 100 minus uh, count divided by nx times ny times 100. Okay, this is basically just um, on a percentage scale, how many pixels am I keeping? How many, not, not pixels, how many frequencies am I keeping out of all total frequencies? So finally, we're going to, um, we're going to say that a hat was my Fourier coefficients, a hat low or a hat, let's call this a hat filt, these filtered Fourier coefficients. And I'm going to inverse Fourier transform them to get an actual image back. Okay, so A filtered is going to equal the um, IFFT2 of A hat filt. Okay, I can always go from my frequency domain back to pixel space using IFFT2. And the last thing we have to do is actually plot these. Okay, so I'm going to, um, I'm going to say go back to figure one and say subplot two by two by count pick, right? We're on this picture, we're on picture two, and then we'll be on picture three, and then picture four. And we're going to do an image show of our A filt. 
And in the process of Fourier transforming, thresholding, and then inverse Fourier transforming, all of my integer pixel values have become real numbers. They have decimals. So I'm going to reconvert them back to an integer, to a, you know, an unsigned integer with 8 bits. And uh, I'm going to say count pick equals count pick plus 1. And I'm going to say draw now and put up a title. So my title is going to say, um, essentially, I'm going to show what is the percent. I'm going to convert that to a string for my title. Uh, and I'm going to say I have that much percent of FFT basis kept. And I'm going to, again, use font size. Uh, I think 16 was too big. Let's try font size 14. OK, I think we're actually good. Um, I'm going to run this now. Let's hope I don't have any errors. Perfect. OK, so this is what we did. We took our original image. We Fourier transformed it. And we basically are taking all of the Fourier coefficients and only keeping the ones that are above a certain threshold. I just I picked some numbers for the threshold. You can play around with that. And I'm compressing this image by throwing away everything that's below threshold. So I want to make this image a little bit bigger so that we can see what's happening here. OK. So our original image is high resolution. And you see that if I keep 8% of my FFT basis, then I almost perfectly reproduce these two images. They look almost identical. You can see, you know, you can zoom in and see that all of the facial features are really kept, like you know, the pupils are kept. Even if I throw away 99% of the Fourier coefficient, so I only keep 1%, I still have a very good um, image reproduction. Now, if I over aggressively filter, you start to see that my compression gets a little bit grainy. So I'm going to try to zoom in to kind of this eye region here. I'm going to do the same thing here. And you'll see that if I over aggressively filter, you start to lose some information. Okay? So there is a limit to how many Fourier coefficients you can throw away before you actually start losing information. But here, you know, this should actually be a pretty decent, um, a pretty decent reproduction if I keep 8% of my pixels. Okay? And remember, on your hard drive, you're only storing these non-zero Fourier coefficients. So here, I'm only storing 1% of the total information in the full image. In the 8% case, I'm only storing about 1 12th of the total information. And so these are huge compression, and this is a huge savings in terms of hard disk space. And if you want to email an image, it takes less data transfer. So compression really is uh, a really important thing to be thinking about. OK, in the next segment, we're going to go a little bit more in depth. We're going to try different images, see when this fails, when it breaks down, and really think about what this two-dimensional FFT means. OK, thank you.